Hey, good evening, Root Stones and Bones folks. This is Hillary. I am live, ready to do a sit and sew with you guys. Okay, so I'm just gonna chat about the project until I see some folks pop on. Here I am with my little note maker taker. So I, if you are not a part of our online community, um, check us out, Crafters of the Curious and Divine. Um, you will find a handy little pattern, just something simple. This is, it's got my notes on it, but this is what I have available in the files there in the group section for you guys. So if you want, um, you're welcome to cut this out and kind of follow along. Um, so in Crafters of the Curious and Divine, you'll find this in the file section. Um, and what we're making tonight are these really cool little um, catnip toys. Let me reach for my finished one here. So here is a finished one that's been beat up by my cats. My cats really, really like this. Um, so generally, it's two pieces of fabric. I decided to use like a rough kind of embroidery fabric. Um, so, you know, the smell of the catnip would come through a little bit more. Um, so two pieces of fabric three feet of a twine, um, and then obviously sewing machine, your thread of choice, you'll need catnip, stuffing, um, pins, you know, most usual things you'll have at the house. There's my cousin Brooke. Hi Brooke, how you doing? I miss you. I'm making a very fun cat toy because everybody is obsessed and want to spoil their pets. Um, I made these on a whim uh, recently for a craft fair and I had no idea that they would actually sell but they all sold if you can believe that I was really surprised. Hey Lisa, I was just talking about the craft fair we did and I was like oh I'm gonna make some cat toys. I doubt anyone will buy them and they all sold so the, here's my little prototype. If you join us in the group You'll get a lovely pattern. You can print it out. It doesn't have this writing on it. That's my notes. Um, and then you can follow along. So a trick I learned from another group, and I love this, um, and I've been doing it for all like little patterns and stuff. If you go to the dollar store and get those plastic cutting boards, look at that. Pretty slick, huh? So I just traced my pattern, and I knew I would be using it a lot. So. Um, I decided to have a more sturdy kind of thing. Hi, Phoebe. I love you. And you love cats. You love my cat. So I'm treating them tonight to these wonderful catnip toys. I'm going to make some. Okay, so I was just talking about um, what you need for the project, where you can find the file in our Crafters of the Curious and Divine group. And you can be slick and make a forever pattern if you want, like me, out of this dollar store. Cutting mat, pretty cool. Anyway, I've gone beyond that, so let's get rid of that. Um, so if if you guys aren't following us, you should you should follow us and turn on the notifications. Like if you click up in the corner, um, you should be able to choose whether or not you your notification settings are on, so you can check out uh, check us out when we're live in the future. Love how that one has veggie fabric. Yeah, that's the, I'm like, oh, what do I use? Veggies? Sure. I don't think cats like vegetables, but what the heck? Um, so yeah, let me get, let's just get started. What else do I have to talk about here? Um, right, Elisa finished some amazing amulet bags. So if you head over to our Etsy, you can see them. She did them um, for each zodiac sign. So there's 12 bags in all if you can believe that like her going crazy crocheting 12 of those they're totally beautiful um but yeah they're they're great you can keep your keepsakes and trinkets and um other special items in there and we always make sure that there's something special sent to you when you get one inside so um and the other thing we have up new are runes and those are handmade by me you can check those out too but that's not what we're here for we're here to make a really silly cat toy with some catnip. So I've got some of these ready in stages um, and I see that there are some people popping on. Hey, I'm Hillary. I'm from Rootstones and Bones. I am making 
catnip toys. Um, everybody likes to spoil their pets, so I'm going to do just that. Um, so I've got my machine set up. Um, I've got it threaded. I've made sure it's clean, all that good stuff. Before you get going, you should always do that kind of thing. And yes, I know, I'm drinking and driving tonight. Do you blame me? Okay. So I do, on this machine, I kind of eyeball it. This is an old um, 1930s Singer's Red Eye. So you have no backstitch on here. So it's a lot of fun. You'll see how I backstitch. I just go a few forward and you have to flip your whole project around. I know, everyone's like, why is she using this archaic machine? Let me tell you why. It sewed through my finger. That's how tough this thing is. It sews through denim, it sews through anything. What's up, Phoebe? An idea for consideration. Play guitar and sing an impromptu song. Aw. Oh, about whatever it's about. people would watch just for that. How funny. I bet they would. How, I don't know. what a, An impromptu song about catnip fish toys. How would that one go? At least the uh, sewing machine keeps rhythm. Can be my drummer, huh, Phoebe? Phoebe used to be in a band with me. We had a lot of fun. It's called Zombie Nurse. We were absolutely goofy and theatrical, and it was a hilarious all-girl thrash band, if you must know. But anyway, I'm on to making much sillier things now. So, again, if you join us in our crafting group, um, Crafters for the Curious and Divine, you will see this file in there, um, up under files, and you can print it out and cut your pattern and follow along at any time. Um, I think I'm using about probably a half inch seam allowance. Um, Esther, hi Esther. Um, she just had a new baby. How are you doing at home with the baby? This is about as far as I venture out of my house, which is great because I don't actually have to venture anywhere to hang out with you guys. So this is a nice treat. All right. I'm chatting and sewing, which can always be dangerous. Um, but I'll live for danger for you guys. There we go. Round in the bend, I forgot to mention in the pattern, I leave a one inch space opening at the top because that's where you're gonna flip it after you trim. And I will show you after I come around here, see I'm getting to the end. Now I got a back stitch. Here we go, flipping my whole project around again. It's not bad on this machine with small projects, but when you have like a large, like when I was doing Phil's vest or something, ooh, that was hard to like, really turn all of that material through the arm of this machine in order to get it to back stitch. But this machine is just super strong and I love it. Okay, here we go. So I'll trim all my fancy little doodads. Does anybody else like actually trim their scraps into the trash? Cause like I'm so bad at that and I just throw it on the floor. I'll sweep later. Um, okay, so I just stitched all the way around. See at the top, I marked an inch down on each side so I can reach through and pull it out. Um, but after this step, so I've gone all the way around, you wanna cut your corners. I like to use pinking shears because things just, you can get a little closer and you don't have to, you know, people say like, oh, you know, cut into the corners, which is fine too, like use whatever method works best for you. And by all means, if you see me doing something silly and you're like, oh, why does she do it that way? I know a way easier way. Please tell me. I want all the tricks. That's half of the reason I'm here hanging out with you guys. I can't wait to meet someone that I can learn some new things from and be inspired by. So I really like that. Throw them on the floor. Yeah, I threw it on the ground. <laughs> Oh no, does anybody remember that really foolish parody thing? I don't know. But yeah, I mean, I could see I'm cutting it right onto my table here. I could be cutting it into the trash barrel, but nah, I'll just take 
care of that later. Okay, so here comes the fun part. We're gonna flip it around, and then I have a couple others that have, um, that are a little farther along in this process. So you can kind of see like some embellishments that I did. You're gonna want a handy dandy poker. These come in the bags with the fluff, the stuff, the polyfill, whatever you're gonna use for the inside of this. Um, for the inside, I'm just using polyfill and catnip. Um, and like I said, I use cotton, um, but on the back here, I used um, sort of an embroidery fabric because um, I thought that would just, it has a lot of holes in it. So I want the cats to really smell it good. Okay, so there you have it. So you're gonna flip it around and you see how there's like a little mouth that's where you're gonna stuff it. So <clears throat> if you tuck that in, there you have it. That's what it's gonna look like in the beginning. Okay, so I've got another one here, different color, <coughs> excuse me. And I've already um, sewn around it. I already trimmed my corners. I did the pinking shears, uh, cause I just like how that comes out. But I did something a little different on the bottom of this cause I was like, oh. What, what would a cat like? What would a cat like to try? What would be fun? Well, you know, things that dangle. And so I did that. If I can get it out here. <clears throat> What's everyone up to tonight? Hi, Sky. I hear you're doing really good over at your shop. If you guys don't know, uh, Sky here has a shop called In a Vintage. And it's really neat. I haven't been able to get out of the house to go over there without children yet. I probably don't want to bring kids over there. Um, but yes, <clears throat> there's a lot of people on this feed that have got some serious talent. So it's nice to call you guys out. So here's another one just for fun. Like I said, <clears throat> stitch, pinking shears, flip it, tuck the little mouthpiece part in. I don't know, and that one's hilarious. <laughs> what do you think of that, Elisa? Woo, the cats will go crazy for that. Okay, so that's just an idea of like some kind of embellishment. I think I got these at, a th at the thrift shop. They come in a big, long cord, and they got silly pom-poms. People use them like on the edges of blankets and stuff. I don't know, I haven't really seen them other than like on goofy ponchos and stuff, so I don't know what to use them for, but this will probably drive my cats crazy. Okay, so different examples of how you can do that. These are awesome for scrap busting. These are awesome for upcycling. So if you have like <clears throat> your man's favorite shirt, he busted through it, you know, you can cut it up, make some cat toys or, you know, whatever other beautiful thing you'd like. Mm. So the next step is stuffing. Now here is a third one I made. Bam, would love it. Yeah, bam, bam, mm-hmm. I have one here. See, I'm not just a mom, I am a cat mom. And my cats have already got theirs and they're very, very spoiled. So bam, bam and pebbles have got one of these. Um, my dear friend, Amanda, who is also in the band with us, with Phoebe, um, We'll have one of these too for Fernando's. She has this amazing one eye survival kitten. Yes, he is a pirate cat. That's right. Mm -hmm. You heard it here. So we've got some gifts coming for these guys. <clears throat> Anybody else in here? A, a pet mom, pet pop. My cousin Chris is, he's got dogs. What happened to Hermione anyway? Poor old gal. Okay, so as you notice, I've got some fluff. Do, do, do. I'm just using an old pillow here. I never actually used use the pillow. So you can use your handy dandy thing that comes with it to stuff in the corners and all of that. Center packing. Ooh, poor Hermione. Okay, and I have got here wow, catnip. And a funnel. I mean, you can go crazy and just dump it in, but I'm a wicked klutz. So, I'm gonna use a funnel. 
and save myself the burden of cats being at my feet right now. I've got the door closed, so I think I'm okay. So I'm just putting probably about three tablespoons into the whole thing. So you can see I stuffed a little already, and now I put some in, and I'm holding the bag so it doesn't drop, so I know how much I'm putting in there, you know what I mean? So I'm eyeballing about a tablespoon, and I'm gonna let it go. Okay, now I'm gonna scruff it up so it's like into all of that. Okay, scruffing, scruffing, and stuffing. So when you sent her packing, where did she go? Poor cat papa. Got rid of her. I liked her mommy. She was an orange kitty. I've always wanted an orange kitty. I've got a tiger cat and I've got like a brindle baby. And they're wonderful. So there's more people popping on. Hi, I'm Hillary. I'm making cat toys tonight. If you would like the file, the little pattern to join along or to do this on your own at some point, because you can always watch this in replay. If you're watching this in replay, let me know. I'd love to know what you guys think if you made these. Um, join our group, the Crafters for the Curious and Divine. And you can find that on our Root Stones and Bones page. We have like a group section. We've been having fun in there. It's kind of like the Root Stones and Bones inside scoop. I share like what I'm doing when I'm making my projects and that kind of thing. Um, but I wanted to make something special for our group and, and kind of give back. So again, um, stuffing, catnip, I'm pinching the end just so you can see that's probably another tablespoon. Jamie, when am I launching a YouTube channel? <laughs> really? I don't know. Would anybody want me there? Why not? Okay, so I see more people popping on. Hi, I'm Hillary. I'm making cat toys. Um, you can find the file in our group if you go to our page, Root Stones and Bones. You can find our group, the uh, Crafters of the Curious and Divine. And I've got a pattern file. Ignore the writing, but this is what it is. And I have made a few and just did that with, um, with these guys watching previously. Um, you can see one silly embellishments, just a plain. So these are fish. Annika, hi Annika. It's been a really long time. Where are you in the world? Okay, so I'm coming around the bend on this one. And then I'll show you how I finish these up. Um, and they are definitely cat approved. Um, Elisa and I both grow a lot of catnip. A lot of catnip for these cats. So we've got nice organic catnip. This is just store-bought. Um, we have our, our fancy stuff. Um, but anyone else looking forward to spring? I can't wait for spring um, with root stones and bones because our garlic will be coming up. All of our herbs will be coming up. We'll be able to do more smudge bundles. We'll be able to have... Oh boy, we, we do so much outside and in the garden and I can't wait to bring you guys out there again this year. It's going to be a lot of fun. Okay, so... Here I am, there's a lot more people popping on. Hey, I am making some catnip toys. Um, everybody wants to spoil their pets, so here's how. An easy way um, to upcycle or, I these are from my scrap bin, all these pieces of fabric. I just went through and was like, ooh, would it look nice? What would a cat wanna, you know? I don't think they really care about color or pattern, but I do, and it's fun. And it's fun doing this with you guys. Okay, so the next step, so I've got my, I stitched it all around, I pinked it, I cut my corners, I flipped it, I stuffed it, I got catnip in it. So now how I like to end it is simply, you will get your three feet of twine, you're gonna stick it in the mouth, okay? So you're essentially catching the fish, like that's what I, <laughs> that's what I dreamed about with this toy, it's pretty silly, right? I don't know, my cats love it though. They get kind of wiped out uh, immediately and are thrilled. So I added some silly tassels on the ends of those for fun. So there you have it. So you're going to pin the top with the rope down inside. And you're simply going to like stitch what would look like a mouth. So I just do a triangle. And it doesn't have to be pretty. You know, the cats are going to be tearing at this or whatever. Um, 
So here you go, Elisa. This one's for Bam Bam and, and Pebbles. Let me get it. Oh, I just had it all together and then I just yanked the rope because I think I'm hilarious, apparently. There we go. Bam. Bam Bam. That's for my partner's kitty cats. All right. So as you can see, I've got it all together. I've got the rope in the top. I have even gone as far as tying a little hitch loop to hang onto it. Um, and now I'm gonna just go through my machine with it uh, and do a quick little triangle and you will see it finished. Um, this is great. It's nice to see everybody tonight. Hi, I see more people popping on. Tell me what you're up to, where you're at. I'd love to know what you're doing tonight. Um, do you sew, do you craft, do you want to? It's it's for anybody. I'm having a little wine. I know Elise is at work, so she's not drinking wine. If she wasn't, she would be. Okay. Here we go. I've got all my doodads all over the place. Pardon me. So again, I'm I'm Hillary from Root Stones and Bones. You should. You should follow us. Uh, you can turn on the notifications at the top of the screen. It'll it'll drop down and it'll say, notify me when Root Stones and Bones goes live. And you should do that because it's really fun hanging out with you guys. Anyone crafting tonight? I'm crafting tonight, Elisa. <laughs> no, really? I know. I can hear her being snarky right now. Okay, so I am going to just zip right over the rope. I go back a couple times. I go around like twice or something just to make sure it's nice and strong. Um, like I said, this machine is a beast, so I really don't have to worry too much um, about missing anything. Okay, here we go. And I'm going to pull my needles as I go. But yeah, these are really fun. So I made these. We had a craft and vendor fair in Leiden, and I was like, oh, what's something you know, kind of fun and new that I haven't done before that I could make. And, you know, Lisa was like, well, we should make something for pets. Like everybody wants to spoil their pet. Everybody wants, you know, and we were growing organic catnip. So we had like nice little pouches of that too. Um, so I just came up with this little ditty and thought, what the heck? Who knows if anyone will buy one? I kid you not. They were all gone. I, I don't think I even, oh, I came home with one. Came home with one, and it's the one that Phoebe likes the fabric of so much. This is a one that my cats use a lot. It's got <laughs> veggies. So they, you can see it's like kind of grimy, and my cats love this thing. So if you make this for your cats, they will love you, and they will love it. All right, here we go. So I went over that. I kind of have an archaic machine, so I like to do everything hard way isn't that the truth but that's kind of how you learn things so I like to just tie off my end even though I went back over it so these cats are gonna go crazy on it okay so now I'm gonna create like the fish's mouth if you will all right I'm gonna, I'm gonna wing it here it goes here we go all right almost to the home start here lining up like a triangle that looks pretty perfect and I'm just gonna go give me one more stitch is anybody as picky as I am I'm pretty critical about myself <laughs> and what I do here all right I'm gonna just go over this you see me doing the hand crank it's a good it's a good thing to have okay I'm gonna back stitch that's my back stitching on these old machines you have to flip your project around completely. There is no backstitch on a 1900 Singer Red Eye. <laughs> I know, why do I torture myself with this? Because it's my favorite machine. I love it. All right, I'm just gonna finish off, make it pretty. I like to pull my threads onto one side and I like to not, even though I've backstitched, I still do this. Does anybody, does anybody do this out there? Okay, here we go. And there you have it in a few simple steps. You have got yourself a fancy cat toy. Now on the other one here, I, I went ahead and I um, 
got a little embroidery floss thread um, and I made some X's for eyes because I think I like the fish dead. Cats are gonna kill them anyway, so they're kind of fun. So there you have it. So I just did a quick little triangle where the mouth is and now we have a lovely hanging dead fish infused with catnip for this one's for uh, Bam Bam and Pebbles. I struggle with going slow enough to do a good job on your machine. Yeah, the trick with sewing machines, honestly, like I love to step on the gas. Like, don't get me wrong. Like I love to just like, you know, it's a lot of fun. Um, but doing that creates a lot of problems. You end up, you end up, screwing your machine up a lot and and your projects too you know if it's slow and steady honestly especially if you're doing any kind of like applique um you really need to be watching where you're going what you're doing <coughs> so i will go over my little project again here mm. and i see that there's about 50 people watching i would love to hear from you guys um so you've you've seen over the past few months I've done, you know, sit and sews, which is really fun. Like I'm having fun, like showing you guys some simple things I make. Um, I've gone live to do some Oracle readings. Um, I did a broom once. I, um, uh, I think that was New Year's Eve. I did a broom. Um, but there's, there's a lot of cool things that we can do. And I'm wondering what you guys would like to, sh to see us share. Um, so if you guys have any input about that, like when garlic season starts, we will be cruising in the garden and showing you guys all about that. We're going to have braids again this winter, this fall, pardon me. Um, and we're going to be scaping and all that good stuff. Um, so again, I'll go over this project quick. If you go to Rootstones and Bones um, Crafters Group, Crafters of Curious and Divine, you're going to find in the files up at the top, um, I uploaded catnip toy so it's just a page and it's got the fish on it this writing is all my notes um so cut it out and get some scraps get some you know this is a great scrap buster fabric uh for fabric any type of upcycles you have like a shirt you love you don't want to get rid of you know foolish stuff like that i know sentimental things can turn into the best things I'm telling you so you go ahead put two together you can put silly embellishments on it you sew leave an inch from the top flip it and then you stuff it with your catnip and your stuffing I don't know what else folks will use and then give it a stitch with the mouth a nice triangle and I will go ahead when I'm finished here um, and give it a little X for an eye because I like that and you can come back to this video anytime and check it out. Pretty fun, huh? I think my cats are going to love this. I'm surprised they're not scratching at the door yet. So, you see the pom-poms are very cute. And they're cute. You have silly pom-poms. It's hard to, like, read and see all this at once. So I'm wondering if anyone has any questions tonight or if anybody wants me to go over a part again. Um, but like I said, this is going to be on replay. You can watch this video anytime. Um, you can follow along, see what I'm doing. Um, I love these and I know your cats will too. So I think that's it for me. Uh, Hillary from Root Stones and Bones. If you haven't followed us yet, please follow us, like our page, check out our Etsy shop. We've got lots of cool stuff. And of course, keep coming back. Um, turn on your notifications so it shows when we go live. I would love to hang out with you. I'd love to chat. Tell me what you're up to. And hopefully we can get some new project ideas for February. Ooh, Valentine's Day. Maybe there's a cool Valentine's project you guys have in mind for me. All right. I'm signing out. I'm going to go get those cats. Good night, everyone.